that. And I don't want to date mm-hmm. somebody and yoke my life up with somebody else yeah. who's doing things that is going to result in God not having favor on our home. Yeah. And that is what I more care about, more so than were they in a fraternity or sorority. Do they live a life that is trying their best to honor God? Again, not perfect because none of us are, but are they doing everything they can Mm -hmm. to try to pursue Him? What's up, fam? Welcome back to our channel. My name is Tim. This is my beautiful wife, Pauline, and you're tuning in to another episode of the W Podcast, where you get wisdom in the world with the wheelers. Hey, so we are so excited to have y'all back for another episode. How you doing? You good? <laughs> yes. Why are you laughing? You're so funny. How you doing? Do, do good? Do yeah, well. you good? Just Can just, I answer? Just check it in. Check it in. How are you? Just making sure my wife is straight. You know what I mean? Before we jump right in. Um, but I'm good. Uh, doing well. Doing well. Basketball season starts soon. soon Football's going on. Great. So it's just a good time of year. You know what I mean? 24 hours. Good time of year. So we got a really interesting question. Honestly, a question. Well, this is, uh, we got 160 episodes or so of the W Podcast. And I don't think we've ever had a question around this topic specifically. So, New territory. Yeah, it definitely should be good and hopefully helpful. And I'll let you go ahead and read what it is. Why are you making that face? I just am so... I love you so much. Yeah, you're so... What type of face am I making? Just, I asked, just go. I asked you to read. You're just smiling. And you're like, what is happening right now? Yeah. Can I just love uh, Yeah, yeah. Okay, the question is, is it okay to date someone who's in a fraternity or sorority group? Is it okay to date someone who's in a frat or soror? Really interesting. Or in a soror. Is that not how you say that? There's not a short. There's not a shortened version for it. My bad. Um, well, first of all, we appreciate whoever asked this question um, because this is one we never had. So that's. I feel like that's kind of hard to do at this point, but grateful. Um, I feel like Pauline may have more passion behind this. I don't know if she's gonna share, you know, a little bit of her story. Oh my she God. didn't pledge nothing. But, I did not. Uh, you know, Praise she God. she has some situations around it, so. Oh, <laughs> Woo! I never wanted to myself personally. Um, so and it had nothing to do with Christ, but uh, just if you're wondering. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the short answer to this question is it depends, and I say that because it everyone's de- favorite answer. Yeah, it depends on the situation. In the sense that, are they still in the frat? Because some people did participate in a frat or sorority. And then they may have denounced. Or they just may simply be like, you know, that was the time of my life. And I don't even pay my dues no more. There's nothing spiritual about it. I just ain't in it anymore. And there's some people who's 70 years old. And they still out here stomping the yard. And making it do what they do. So I think uh, perspective matters. Also, I'm not here. This episode is not about, at least for me, I don't know what you're going to say, babe, but this episode is not our fraternities or sororities bad, or at least I'm not going to be the one to define that because I don't know enough about them. Um, but I, that's because I haven't done research on it because, again, it wasn't something that ever really interested me. But I will say there are some things that you really want to look out for regardless if somebody's in a frat or a sorority or not, but especially if they're in it, you're going to want to ask them these questions that we're going to share. And then also look out for these characteristics and behavior. Now I will say disclaimer, there are plenty of people who are, you know, say they're Christians, say they love God, say they're on fire for God and say that nothing about their sorority or fraternity was ungodly as far as their experience, whether it be Charity. how they pledged, whether it be what they do now that they're already remember, in yeah. the fraternity or sorority. So we're just putting that out there. That is what it is. Now, I will say the character and behavior of somebody who participated in a frat or sorority or is currently in one matters. Just like it matters for anybody else. Mm-hmm. And I think 
there's a verse. Let me just read it. Galatians 5, 19 through 21. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality sounds like what's glorified in fraternities or movies. Impurity, in movies. lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition. They gonna love me for my amb- dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties. Sounds like <laughs> Project X or whatever that movie was called. What? And other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, I don't know about you, but I ain't trying to date nobody who's not going to be inheriting the kingdom of God. And let's be clear, we're not saying that somebody is going to be perfect because none of us are. And there's been times where I'm sure we've all found ourselves at one of those things on the list. Mm -hmm. So this is not a judgmental perspective. Mm -hmm. But this is a, yo, marriage is a really big decision. Yeah, Who I marry is going to impact the rest of my life. And if I'm with somebody, whether they were in a fraternity, sorority or not, and they're doing things that God clearly says he opposes, I don't want to be a part of that. I don't want to date somebody and yoke my life up with somebody else who's doing things that is going to result in God not having favor on our home. And that is what... I more care about more so than were they in a fraternity or sorority. Do they live a life that is trying their best to honor God? Again, not perfect because none of us are, but are they doing everything they can Mm -hmm. to try to pursue him? Now, I've been going a little long. So is is there anything you want to add before I go further? Please. So that's what you want to look out for more so than were they in a frat or sorority. Yeah. Now, what you do want to look for, because a lot of times we just say, don't do this, don't do that, and we don't highlight what you should be doing or what you should be looking out for in somebody. Um, in that same chapter, Galatians 5, now we're in 22 through 23, it says, but the Holy Spirit produces nice this verse. kind of fruit in our lives, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, you know it, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There's no law against these things. So I think you want to be looking... Is this person, whether they say they're still in a frat or not in a frat, are they exhibiting these behaviors Mm -hmm. when I'm with them, when I'm observing them in public? That's what really matters. Now, I I want you to go next because you know more about the spiritual side of frats and sororities than I do. So maybe I'm overlooking something. Maybe it needs to be more black and white. I don't know. What are your thoughts? Black and white? No, I don't think anything in God's kingdom is really black and white. <clears throat> Except for, like, just your beliefs. Like, do you believe Jesus is the Son of God? Do you believe him down to your sins? Or unless it's, it's clear on the scripture, right. don't do this. But then a lot of people, you know, any, some things are up to, you know, everything can be interpreted differently. But anyway... Something like this that's not in the Bible, like the word fraternity, sorority, um, dating, you know, those words are not in the Bible. So I think it can be, it does require a lot of research and a lot of um, background. And so just to go back to the question, is it okay to date someone who's in a fraternity or sorority group? Now, is it okay to date them? I think that the fact that you're even asking this question, like if we were sitting down, if you were sitting right here with us, whoever asked this question, I would ask you, why would you think it's not okay? Like what what about them or what you've seen about their affiliation with this organization makes you feel like, mm, is it okay for me to ask? Because you wouldn't ask me, is it okay to date somebody who wears a green shirt? You just wouldn't ask that because it's very trivial, um, something that changed, something that's very insignificant to your decision to date them or not, right? So obviously you've seen something in this person or and or within the group that they're affiliated with that's making you kind of question, is this okay? Um, so I would just start there and like, you know, what have you seen? Have you seen something that's kind of in that that aligns more with that first part of Galatians 5, talking about like wild parties and anger and like lack of self-control and sexual morality and things like that. Not that you've necessarily even seen the person that you're interested in participate in those things, but maybe you've seen their fraternity brothers or their sorority sisters or just their organization in general 
be affiliated with those things, and that's why you're kind of concerned. Because, you know, another thing that you that wasn't included in the question is, is it okay as a Christian? And which is, I'm assuming that, you know, that's kind of the premise because it's a Christian podcast. Um, yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. Because obviously in general, is it okay to date them? Sure. If you, but if you don't care what the Lord thinks or says, then, I mean, I don't even think you would have submitted this question. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to assume that it's the latter, that it's more about, like, you've seen things that make you concerned with their group or their their fraternity or sorority. Um, that's making you kind of, like, question if this person is someone you should date. Now, if that's the case, I would have a lot of conversations with this person. Very similar to what you said about, like, what their affiliation is, how involved they are. Because yeah, we know people <laughs> who... One person was in a frat, one person wasn't in any type of Greek life, and they had to have serious conversations about yeah. should who what's what was that like? What, what was up? Yeah, like, well, and a lot of it doesn't even have to be anything like judgmental. Just like, oh, okay, like I noticed that this is in your bio, or I noticed that you were holding up this hand symbol in a picture, or you were strolling at a wedding of your friends. Like, tell me more about that. I didn't know you were, you know, like tell me more about your experience, and they can tell you, um, <clears throat> excuse me, about what their what their experience was like joining the organization. Because like you said, some pe- everyone's you know experience is different, whether you crossed um, undergrad or postgrad or whatever, and all the, every single organization is different. I think that really what you want to know is two things. What's their stance on it now? And then also what's their stance on it in the future? Because, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't know what there that you is. Go. <laughs> Get the past us some water. You good? Because um, regardless of how they joined, you know, the past is the past. Hold on. I'll, I'll talk. You go ahead and drink because you over here I choking about. I got right you. I Thank see. You. That's what you got to do as a good husband, fellas, when you get there. Always anticipate needs. See, I this was like my that. water. I do like that. This was you. my water, well, but so I sacrificed. Your own you anticipate your own no. Needs. I sacrificed yeah. for my wife. Anyway, go ahead. Anyway. Um, thanks for that little commercial break. Ooh, it's the chills. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so the the two things you need to know how they feel about it now, and then what they feel about it for the future. And ideally, before you agree to marry somebody, you want to be aligned on as many things as you possibly can be aligned on. Um, that doesn't mean that your life looks is aligned in the sense that like, oh, I'm not in a fraternity, she's not in a sorority, or I am, she is, or whatever. But it's more of like our beliefs. Our goals are aligned. So if they are currently active in their organization and they're saying like, yo, the Lord has been really talking to me about this and I don't feel right being associated with this organization anymore. And you also have a strong conviction because like, again, I agree with what you said. This podcast is not about our sororities and fraternities godly. Because we are just not prepared to have that type of conversation right now. <laughs> it takes a lot of research, and it's all it's all of it is going to be, um, like refutable. And I'm just like at a place where I'm. It's I mean, if someone I guess wanted to like be educated, I did a fair amount of research because I did really want to pledge when I was in college. Really, I did right before I got Lord, saved. Please, <laughs> Lord. It was something I honestly and people can laugh. You can out. laugh about it if you want. This is all glory <laughs> to Jesus. I love it. It was something that I really like laid down at the altar. Um, and why is that funny? I just like making funny. Okay, ahead. yeah, I have family members who are like uh, in the organization in organizations who I love, like love these families members to this day my my parents especially my dad really really wanted me to pledge um and yeah it just was it was something that after having a radical encounter with Jesus I really felt like how can I kind of make this decision commit myself to God and then basically turn around and immerse myself in this extremely toxic and sin-filled culture and as much from as from the research you did and what you had knew about those orgs so this was even before like doing heavy research on the spiritual aspect because i was very i had like laid it at the feet of the lord but then i was still like god we still need to talk about this because this is something i wanted to do since i was a child and um 
feeling like like it was one of the reasons why I chose to go to the college that I chose to because I wanted the option to pledge and um, yeah it was a pretty big decision for me and I'm so glad that I did for myself um, but I think that yeah so this is before I even did all the spiritual research behind it about you know the Bible saying like get your yes BS and um, you know kind of the whole why did you think it was toxic you? before you even did research because you're at least my experience and what my knowledge and exposure of what of undergrad Greek life, it was very sexual. There's a lot of parties. There's a lot of drinking. There's, you know, you're pretty much in hiding for weeks. Um, people are getting beat. People are getting, you know, getting sick, going to the hospital. Like, it's not things that... Eating cookies. I mean, I don't know about all that. Um, people getting dropped off and, and like, butt naked in random cities. Find your way home. People getting burned. Like, all these different things. And there's also, it has this air of secrecy on it. You're going to go through this for weeks. You can't tell anybody about it. Um, and and if again, you do, you'll get beat. This is from stories we've heard from people. I know there's going to be people, that wasn't my experience. We're not talking about you there. Right, but even if that is your experience where, like, you, people, some people say, like, skated on or whatever, like, or you just pledged after grad school or after undergrads or in grad school or beyond, like, that's great. But also, can you honestly say that even though that wasn't your personal experience, that there weren't other people who got into your organization that way? Before or after you. So it's kind of like just, it was just a, the overall magnitude and like macro level association with, you know, just the organization. And for me, doing more research and realizing like, okay, this is very much mimicking the kingdom of God, where like a lot of, like, and even just asking yourself, why do you want to join? A lot of it was like to feel like that sense of sisterhood or brotherhood and belonging and networking and community and like, you know, black history and all of those things. And it's like, okay, all of those things are good, but why do I need to drop my identity? Why do I need to be covered with a hood? Why do I have to get a new name at the ceremony? What are all of these like, this, I think also, because I'm somebody who's very much believes in the power of like rituals um, and traditions, like even the biblical ones of like communion and baptism and weddings and things like that. All those things mean a lot to me. And I think everybody has their own traditions and rituals that they believe in, whether they're spiritual or not. Um, and so for me, looking more into those rituals that take place and like the chants that are said and like the goddess of Minerva and all these other, um, you know, Greek gods that are over these certain organizations and like just learning more about it. I was like, okay, how can I, un I can't unsee this now. And I think the trouble is a lot of people when you're 19, 20, 21, 22, you're, you're joining these organizations and not really knowing what you're getting yourself into. And by the time that you are in it, you feel like it's too late to get out. Like I'm going to let everybody down and let my line down. If I, you know, if I quit or whatever. And like all those things, of course, are designed to make you kind of feel that way as well. Um, and I don't like, you know, have plenty of friends who have pledged, have some friends who, um, have renounced and then other friends who feel like they well, should call friends, people that we know that feel that, that that's not necessary for them and um, that their their identity as Christians has, is takes place over their association or affiliation with an organization. And I very much respect that. I don't know what the heck the right thing is to do because it, it's not for me to know and it's not for me to tell somebody what to do. All I know is what my experience is and what I've learned and what I've seen and comparing rituals and um, founding members and just traditions and ideals that are held by certain organizations and comparing them to what, at the time when I was 19, or 18, 19, whatever, um, comparing them to this newfound faith that I was taking very seriously that I said, you know, my relationship with Christ is number one. Just the same way if I was about to, you know, enter into a relationship at this time with, uh, with a guy, how can I say, oh, Jesus is my number one, but I'm about to link up with this guy who knows nothing about Jesus and honestly just impersonates him in a lot of different ways. Um, so, and that was my, just my, the reason why I decided not to go forward with it was because I felt like 
this is going to take me away from everything that I'm trying to build up so much um, when it comes to my faith in Christ. And um, I actually did get to speak to a girl at the conference that I got saved at who was in a Greek organization. And I was like, hey, she had her letters on at the, at the conference. And I asked her, like, hey, you know, like, could I talk to you? I'm, like, really conflicted. Um, I grew up, you know, really wanting to pledge. And then, like, now I just met Jesus, and I don't really know what to do. Like, how did the two mix do they mix and that's because you know before i came to christ i was cool with all the stuff that came with being greek and you know just accepted that like this is a part of it and like it'll kind of work out in the end or it will kind of like being a part of the organization will like kind of protect me and stuff and even learning from other girls so it's like yeah they joined this organization and, like the sisterhood's not as great as everyone says it's going to be as far as like friends and like all that stuff i know everyone's situation or experience is different with that but um Yes, anyway, I did get to speak to this um, young lady, she was older than me, um, about her experience of, like, being a Christian in this organization, and she told me, like, yeah, it is really hard, and, like, for her, she got saved after she joined, so she kind of already had this really strong like kind of tie to this community and this organization that she was very very conflicted with and didn't really know what to do with and I kind of felt like why would I put myself in that you know situation if she's telling me how hard it is and how like you know she's being told like you're abandoning us and you're not kind of upholding your duties and this and that and you need to be here you need to be there but the places that she's asked to be at or told to be at are putting her in very vulnerable and dangerous situations um, and that's, you know, this is what's expected of her. And it seemed very controlling. It seemed very um, toxic. Um, so anyway, that's just my experience as to, like, why I yeah. did it. And again, not even going to the whole spiritual bit of it of, like, the gods and goddesses and, right. like, you know, so the rituals. You said you need to ask, where do you align? So you're okay. saying... <laughs> Bringing it back. You, they need to align on what they view about fraternities. What do you mean by that? So I don't think you should be so hung up on like, okay, did you denounce or not? I think like if that comes up or that's a decision that they made, like, okay, cool. Like you accept that. At the end of the day, you are not deciding for yourself if you're joining the organization or not. You're deciding, is this a person that I want to potentially, can I see myself linking my life with in the future and if a big part of their life is this organization then that organization is going to become a part of your life as well and that varies person to person because like you said some people they did it in college and it was a college thing and they haven't really thought about it since and it's over other people are paying thousand dollars every year they go to every conference they wear their paraphernalia is over their house it's very much a part of their identity um some people refuse to even marry somebody outside of the like pairing organization because each organization has like Mm -hmm. oh so so and so dates so and so um so it just very much depends on where they're at and what their their kind of like mindset perspective is on the organization right now now if they're very involved and they're telling you like yeah i go to the conference yeah i do this yeah i'm involved um but christ is still number one in my heart over this organization i would probably pause a lot faster because it's you know to say one thing and to do another i think it's very kind of like conflicting and it's very hard in black culture because there are a lot of Baptists or just black churches in general that very much honor black Greek life, black Greek letter organizations um, in the church so today. Let me ask you this. If somebody says that they, because there's plenty of people who say, I love Jesus, he's Lord of my life, but I still rock with my fraternity or sorority. Is it, because again, you know more about this stuff than I do. Is it simply a matter of, are you, because you told me that some, or maybe all, fraternities sororities from the research you were doing back in the day like they be proclaiming to goddesses or gods or whatever like they be like yeah it's a part of their chance cha- yeah like so like if they say i ain't never did that i've never done that if they say that and mm-hmm. it's true whatever is it still okay if they're still doing if, if you didn't do it you wouldn't be in the organization well, oh. Okay, sure. But there's some people who say, I've never done it. But so. and there are also people who have said that they don't remember it, but it happened. And then they're lying brother or sister. Okay, like, but answer my question. If somebody says they've never done that, is that the only issue that you would have with it? Like, if, they, if, they've, if they've never... 
I don't know the right word. Pledge. Ple- pledge to another God. And it's just literally they're in their fraternity and sorority and they do community service events. If that's it, I'll just answer the question. That's, that's not it. possible. Though. Okay, but just answer the question. Because I'm, try- I'm trying to do something. Just, I need your help. If that is possible somehow. Okay. Is it... Is that the only thing that would be hung up for you? Or no, you would say it's hung no. up for somebody else? No. There's other things. Yeah. Like what? The, I'm, I'm, I'm somebody that's very uneducated. So there's a lot of people, other people that are probably too. So I'm trying to understand. So you're saying it's the only problem that you pray to a yeah. false god. Yeah. And that you associate yourself and yes. wear an emblem on your body you that d- has a false god on it. Right. And if you, if you didn't... Do all the wild, or if you did do the wild parties and stuff, because you could do that and not be in a fraternity sorority. But that's not your life anymore. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm trying to like. Is or can we still be aligned then? So the alignment is more about your investment, your current and future investment. So again, not focusing too much on what happened in the past. Okay, you're in this organization. Cool. Are you? You were whatever. How is that relevant right now? Regardless of whatever the rituals were that took place. To me, what's most important is like how, what is the level of commitment and energy that you are going to give to this organization that are you giving to this organization right now? So if you are still invested, money, time, energy, excuse me, that's going to be an issue for me. Personally, now obviously, whoever asked this question or whoever is having a similar situation, um, you have to kind of figure that out for yourself. Is how much is this does this matter to you, and how important is it to you? How important is it to your future children? Because there are people who pledge and they're like, "We're a X Y Z family, and my kids will be future whatever," and they make onesies for these babies <laughs> and people, you know, grow up saying future this, future that. Um, so if that's, and some people may not care enough to say, oh, if my kid wants to pledge, then, you know, that's fine. But also legacy is very powerful. We follow in our parents' footsteps in a lot of ways. And if you are somebody who decides that you don't want to do something that your parents do or have done, you have to fight really, really hard against, you know, against that grain because a lot of times you're groomed in order to follow in a certain foot, certain footstep. Um, a pathway. So uh, it's not really about like checklists. Did you say the chance? Did you not? When's the last time you said them? It's more about what's your heart? How important is this to you? And like, you know, how do they talk about it? What's their experience? Like people saying, yeah, I did this. And, you know, after I met Jesus, I realized like, yeah, that organization wasn't really good for me. Those relationships that I built were surrounded by drinking or surrounded by drugs or surrounded by illegal activity or just like promiscuity, things like that. Or if you're like, oh, yeah, my organization was great. Like all we did was, you know, high five each other and rake, you know, the lawns and clean up the community and like that's your association with it like well that's great but also why is the other half of the organization doing you know like illegal things like why is that why are you okay being associated with an organization like that i think that's really what my overall thing is like how do you turn a blind eye to the other stuff that's going on to the kids who are going to the hospital because that's just a part of H E double hockey sticks week you know like that's I think that's what kind of was the hang up for me if you're going to like, because people, this isn't like a casual, some people it's not a a casual, oh, this is what I do on the weekends type of thing. Like this is my favorite restaurant right now. It's like, you see like those fanatics on like NFL and NBA teams, like some people go so hard for their org, like tatted, burned up, all the things. Like this is like a very strong part of who you are. Now obviously there are other people who have the tats, have the whatever they call the burns and stuff and they're like dang i regret this like yeah so i think you bring up a good point to be clear and to summarize what i think you just said you need to be comfortable i I was gonna say something like this like if someone is still involved 
you need to be comfortable with whatever their involvement is if you're going to continue to, to date them and marry them. Because if you are somebody where it will make you uncomfortable that they're still going to events or still pledging or, or, or not pledging, but still uh, on the line or whatever it is that they be doing. <laughs> if, if that is going to bother you, then don't put yourself through that yeah. because you're just going to make your life and their life miserable. So don't even don't even do that. The Bible talks about counting the cost. Like count the cost of the person you're pursuing. If that's a major part of their life, there's gonna be yeah, situations true. that could cause some issues. Yeah, you can't really it's not really about, you know, deciding oh how involved this person is. I think that you'll see if you're around them enough and you hear them talk enough what their level of commitment and involvement is. Um, and also if everybody in their family is in it, it's a pretty deep deep tie so it's gonna be even harder to break um, yeah are you comfortable with thanksgiving people when your kids through, are uh, yeah. 18 19 and they want them to pledge i mean because they start recruiting early and they are talking to you like why are you not why are you not gonna let them pledge why yeah. like are you do you want to deal with that that's something that you're gonna it's hard for us to think uh long term but that's something we want to deal with and i, I read that already i saw what you were waving at I was cleaning up oh. the screen. Ah, got me. So, last question that I do want to just make sure we hit. When we talked about just having conversations with them, like, hey, what was your experience like? One of the things that comes up, like, yeah, like, I was kind of out here sexually. You know, just like any other relationship, at some point in a relationship, you want to have those conversations. Okay, what does that mean? Like, was it like a, a, just a one-time thing that you have with one person and that's all you've done? Or was you out here 10, 15, 20, 30 people? Like, am I going to walk through the mall with you and people going to be looking at me like, hmm, I know how he tastes or she tastes. Like, that's just something that I just, I want to know. I just want to, I don't want nobody rolling up on me and surprising me. Um, so that's just something that you may want to consider. Pauline, I don't know if you, you look like you feel differently about that, but. I feel differently about what? I don't know. Your, like, how how your are face. you suggesting somebody ask that? How many bodies you have? <laughs> Maybe you can be that. I mean, like... Be that frank. But that's the pro. So, if it comes up naturally in what they're saying... I actually, I was very clear, actually, in what I just said. <laughs> Let's just rewind. So, if you're having a conversation, hey, what was your experience like when you were going through this? And then they say, yeah, I, had, I also was promiscuous... You can just say, what does that mean? Does it mean one? Mm -hmm. Or does it mean 20? That's all I'm, that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the question. That's, yeah. Because that matters. Because whether people believe it or not, the sexual activity that you have before you get married will come up in some way when you do get married. Yeah, like STD testing. Experience, well, not even that. Just like experiences. When I get into a certain position. Oh, that remind me of, or yeah. Like. That's real stuff. And that's why if you haven't had sex yet, please, like, I know it seems like everybody else is doing it, but do yourself a favor and just continue to wait on God to bring you yes, your spouse yes. because there's nothing worse than being saved, on fire for God, but then you still have thoughts of what you were doing in your ungodly days. And don't, like, we all have thoughts. Nobody forgot what they did before Christ. So we're not condemned by it. We shouldn't have shame over it. But that don't mean memories don't come up. So it's just why put yourself through that situation if you don't have to. Yeah. Absolutely. I think in the end, it's just important to be aligned on whatever you are. You need to know your own values and your own priorities. And you want to link up and hopefully marry somebody who has as similar values and priorities as you as possible. If being in a fraternity or sorority is not important to you and you have your own convictions about that, then you want to, it's going to be really hard for you to date somebody who is in one, whether how involved they are or not. Um, I know unless me, they're now on your. Right, unless they've had a radical transformation. Now, for me, that was kind of like the case where it was like, okay, I've learned too much, I've seen too much. Um, I definitely don't, can't be with somebody who is either all the way for it or is like, lukewarm um on it i had to be with somebody who had no interest no history no so you found mr right mr right for me um <laughs> you know had no kind of like affiliation or kind of association with it or that they were like me very like oh absolutely not i would never do that or i 
like am not in agreement with it. Um, I just think I'm just I'm a really big seeker of truth. I think that it's too easy to just assume the best about honestly culture so whatever is popular in black culture and american culture as a christian i've always felt this like not always but even more so as i've grown um hopefully grown in the lord just grown up i just feel whatever is popular in culture we as christians need to challenge more so in as a christian woman as a black christian woman as a black christian mom um you know all these things it's like okay well x y and z is popular why is it popular who is behind it who is it helping who is it serving at the end of the day you're either building the kingdom or you're not and the bible talks about that like you're either for me or you're against me and so many things in culture are hidden in plain sight things that are mimicking and what are the, what's the word a counterfeits of the kingdom of god and for me BGLOs were one of those things, and it's not the only thing, obviously, so let's not, you know, get all up in arms about things, um, but there's just so many things, you know, there's just wool over our eyes for so many things in black culture, and, like, I know people go hard for organizations because it promotes black excellence and black education and black people and just all the famous alumni and all these things that come from these organizations, and it's like, okay, but as a Christian, Jesus is our standard, not these alumni or these founders. And um, it just gets, yeah, there's just a lot of things that are kind of hidden. I think it's just, we don't research enough. And we just kind of accept things for what it is. And at the end of the day, most people join those organizations because they want to feel important. They want to feel known on their campus. They want to be significant. Um, yes, they want help and networking and stuff like that. But, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. There's so many other ways to, to network that isn't, you know, involving spiritual confusion. Um, so it's just at the end of the day, I think I would, I think I get always kind of a little bit concerned. Not that everybody thinks like me because I know that they don't, but like when people are in situations like this or they're in certain groups and they go hard for the group and it's like, okay, what about this or that? Oh, well, that does not my experience. Oh, that's not true. And it's like, okay, well, explain it to me. Oh, I can't allowed to talk about it. Well, why is that? Like, <laughs> it's not secret. It's not something of darkness, but you can't share about it i don't know that's very troublesome to me and then it's like conflicting with the word of god so at the end of the day do your research um and be open to being kind of like hurt <laughs> be open just because i know that was like the hardest thing for me was like oh this is something that i've wanted for so long that's been encouraged encourage me I was encouraged to do by family members like shouldn't this be a good thing and um yeah just you have to sometimes make decisions beyond your five senses and you know, not just do things check off on a google search or like a history of an organization or famous alumni but like yeah what is the holy spirit telling me to do um am I allowing him to correct me am I allowing him to to bring truth or am I just trying to kind of like hush out the noise and see what I want to see so that I can, you know, be a part of something that I feel like is bigger than me, even though you're supposed to be in that by being a Christian anyway. So at the end of the day, I've said that so many times, <laughs> this podcast, um, I think that if you already have concerns about somebody and an organization that they're affiliated with, <sighs> I would, I would pause, I would pause and ask questions, and if they're, if they get offended or defensive, that's probably a good enough answer for you right there. Well said. So, we tried our best to answer this in a way that hopefully allowed you to sit through it and, and listen, and allow the Holy Spirit to speak through you, and not instantly cause you to think we're judging or anything like that because that's definitely not our heart we just tried to answer the question that somebody asked us to the best of our ability and at the end of the day like Paul Lee said please ask the Holy Spirit for yourself yeah because that's what matters we'll see y'all next week on the W podcast thanks for watching this video to get more Christian relationship advice subscribe to our channel and make sure you check out our other videos as well